Hey there, my fellow investors. My name is Marquez, and in this video, I'm going to compare two popular ETFs, QQQ with VTI. Before we start, I'd be really happy if you would share your own thoughts on VTI and QQQ. What do you think about them? And also, if you have like your favorite ETFs that you're investing right now, or you're curious and you would like to find a comparison, I can make a video on it. So if you have some interesting ETFs or stocks to compare to review, write it down below in the comments and I will review them. Also, I created a course on how we can make money with ETFs, what are some good strategies that you can use, long term, short term, and what kind of things you can do with ETFs. You will find it also in a link down below in the description. So let's start and let me give you all the necessary information you need about QQQ and VTI. So first thing first, QQQ uh, is owned by Nuesco and VTI is by Vanguard. Uh, there are three, like all oh, like three or four really big differences. The first thing is expense ratio. So when you would invest ten thousand dollars, this is going to be twenty bucks, and this is going to be three bucks uh, that you would pay in fees. So expense ratio VTI is winning. Uh, I'm not really going to compare assets under management or average daily volume. Really important thing about VTI and QQQ is underlying index. What does it mean? With underlying index is that VTI is a total US stock market, whereas QQQ is top 100 companies and it's pretty heavy on tech. And you can see the directing number of holdings, 103 comparing to nearly 4,000 number of holdings. So VTI is more diversified. And this is really important. So many times what people are doing is that they are, they have like 50% QQQ, let's say, uh, something and then 25% VTI. That's also a really good strategy if you want to, but um, I'm not going to say like what you should do, that's your money. So this is pretty much it. Number of holdings and number of holdings of QQQ is much lower, so it's pretty much more riskier comparing to total market of VTI. And as you come here, the median tracking difference is again 0.29%. And here is 0.03 on VTI. And when you go further, this is the performance that I want to show you, is when you compare the performance, look, for the last month, we see that QQQ is higher. Three months, again, QQQ higher. One year, 44% comparing to 43%, but right now 2020 was crazy. Then three years, we see that QQQ was overperforming VTI, or even five years. So as you can see, but tech companies were growing really hard and you can see it in sectors right here. So this is why you see also the VTI performing really well, only because uh, the technology is 33% in VTI comparing to 64% of technology in QQQ. I will also show you the, show you the overlapping. Now consumer cyclicals 20% and here it's 14.53%. And then you see like you, you don't see any finance in QQQ financials you see in VTI. Again, healthcare, 13% comparing to 6%. And then we get like industrials, basic materials, energies, utilities, and everything, right? But again, QQQ is heavily focused on a technology and kind of consumer cyclicals. Now, when we go further, and when we look on a stocks and holdings, look at this, Microsoft Corporation, Apple, and Amazon makes 20, 28%. 29%, let's see. What's that? Plus 7.30, yeah, 29, nearly 29%. Only Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft in QQQ. But check VTI. So VTI, when we compare it, and that's what? 5 plus 4.75 plus 17, 13. 13% comparing to 29% of first top three holdings comparing QQQ versus VTI. So this is something you should definitely think about. And if you want to choose QQQ or VTI. Now, when we go even further, uh, I want to show you the, also the top 10 weightings. This is also really important data. So top, total top weighting in VTI is 22.77%. Comparing to total top 10 weighting in QQQ is 50 4.72%. Again, you see the big difference. Now, value, uh, this is also the quality score of both, uh, 
out of 10 and 5 5.43 out of 10 and uh, that's like kind of important now i want to also show you a really good information here and that's uh, dividend yield history and you can see clearly that dividend yield history is much better com on vti comparing to qqq so Yes, the QQQ because of technology, and I think technology is going to be even even greater, and I'll explain you in a second why. Okay, so what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the dividend yield history, then about their stocks and what I think about it, and then I'm going to show you a fund overlap. Another thing, dividend yield history, when you look here on this is a QQQ, you see that it's 0 0.55, 0 0.74, 0 0.99, but look at this on a VTI, 1.42, 1.78, 2.04 which is like kind of good year end yield and 1.71 nearly 2% 2% in 2016 2015 but it's again like what is your goal maybe even we all I think it's just much better on dividend yield history yeah the performing is greater comparing to VTI so uh, that's if you want to go with the dividend yield and there are like even greater ETFs uh, so this is something that you should definitely think about and also take into the consideration. Now, when we compare the fund overlap, and this is what I want to show you, and then I'm going to talk about the stocks. 89%, 89.1% of QQQ, those 101 holdings, are also in VTI, and 2.4% only of VTI's 3,99.7 holdings are also in QQQ. And QQQ minus VTI, you see that we're going to see the huge uh, difference in finance, health, industry or real estate comparing to QQQ is heavily in tech, com, and that's pretty much it. Now, when you see also the overlap here, this is something that we were talking about that uh, they are heavily in the top three Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Amazon. The difference is huge here. And the one thing that I want to talk about uh, the stocks and predictions of the future, like people don't really understand about YouTube and everything. One thing, and that's really important, is that kids are growing up and they are starting to be addicted straight away from childhood on mobile, on technology. And also uh, old people are more and more using technology, which is going to be even, even, even better. So I think both options are really good, uh, but I would even check like ARK ETF funds um, if you want to invest into those. That's a good strategy too. And, and yeah, so this is pretty much it. Now, if you can have any questions, guys, ask me down in the comments. I'm really happy to help you to summarize it. Expense ratio, VTI is smaller. Also, mm, expense ratio, then we got also uh, the holdings are different VTI and QQQ. Dividend yield is higher in VTI. Number of holdings are so the diversification is better in VTI comparing to QQQ. Then average spread, it's all right. Now the performance QQQ was better comparing to the VTI. On sometimes it was better, sometimes a little worse. It's like up to you on which point are uh, you gonna like look at and which season which years so it's even good to go in both at the same time that's not a bad idea too but i would just go if i would if i would be me what i do is that i i invest into arc fintech then i got vanguard and then i got stocks that's what i do that's my strategy because i invest directly to stocks that i like right so thank you very much guys for watching and i hope you are going to have a great day and yeah goodbye